Welcome to Cute Fast Track Series for API Recommended Practice 572 Inspection Practices for Pressure Vessels. In this lecture, we will continue discuss sub clauses 9.4 Internal Inspection. And we will discuss and highlight important information contained item 9.4.5 and 9.4.7 Inspection of components General The supports for trays, baffles, screens, grids, piping, internal stiffeners, and other internal equipment should be inspected carefully. Most of this inspection will be visual. Light tapping with a hammer can be used as a check for soundness. If there appears to be any metal loss, the thickness of the support should be measured and checked against the original thickness. Transfer or direct reading calipers, micrometers, or UT thickness instruments can be used for these measurements. Trays The general condition of trays and related equipment should be noted. Shell and tray surfaces in contact with tray packing should be examined for possible loss of metal by corrosion. The condition of trays and related equipment will not affect the strength of the vessel, but will affect the efficiency and continuity of operation. Normally, only visual inspection will be required for such equipment. If measurements are required, they can be obtained with calipers or UT instruments. Internal components All internal piping should be thoroughly inspected visually, especially at threaded connections. The wall thickness may be measured to identify metal loss. The internals of vessels, such as catalytic reactors, are very complicated. Inspection of this equipment may be mostly visual, although some scraping, picking, and tapping may be necessary. Thickness measurements and corrosion rate calculations may be required in some areas, although operating efficiency rather than strength is the most important consideration. Nozzles Nozzles connected to the vessel should be visually examined for internal corrosion. Nozzles, especially pressure relief device PRD inlets, should be inspected for deposits. When the piping is disconnected, actual nozzle wall thickness can be obtained using a caliper around the flange. The wall thickness of nozzles can best be obtained with UT instruments. Linings Heavy wall hydroprocessing reactors operate at high pressure and have special inspection requirements. Experience has identified the following major areas of concern with respect to crack damage. Attachment welds of an internal component. Main weld seams. Gasket grooves, ring joint flanges. Nozzle attachment welds. Secondary areas of concern include base metal and overlay disbonding and integrity of the weld overlay. UT inspection performed from the outside of the vessel can be used to locate and measure the extent of disbond and cracked areas. Linings Welded seams in vessel shells 
should be closely checked. When the service is amine, wet H2S, caustic, ammonia, cyclic, high temperature, or other services that may promote cracking in or adjacent to the welded seams. In addition, welds in vessels constructed of high strength steels above 70,000 psi tensile or coarse grain steels should be checked. The WFMPT is considered the best means for locating surface indications crack. Inspection of nozzles When accessible, nozzles should be internally inspected for corrosion, cracking, and distortion. The inspection can be visual with a scraper and a flashlight. Ring joint grooves The grooves of ring joint flanges should be checked for cracks due to excessive bolt tightening. Also, Stainless steel ring joint grooves should be checked for stress corrosion cracking. NDE methods, such as MT, wet or dry, PT, or UT shear wave techniques may be used to supplement visual examination. Lap joint flanges, or slip flanges. Lap joint flanges or slip flanges such as vanstone flanges should be checked for corrosion between the flange and the pipe. The check can be made from inside the pipe by special probes and UT thickness measuring devices. Inspection of metallic linings Many vessels are provided with metallic linings. Many reactors in hydrogen service, such as hydrocrackers and hydrotreaters, use complete weld overlay that uses stabilized austenitic stainless steel welding rods or wire as liners instead of plug or strip welded or clad plate. The primary purpose of these linings is to protect the vessels from the effects of corrosion or erosion. A careful visual examination is usually all that is required when checking a lining for corrosion. Light hammer taps will often disclose loose lining. The bulges are formed either by the expansion or buildup of a material that seeps behind the lining during operation or by differential thermal expansion. Where a lining leaks, it should be determined whether or not corrosion has taken place behind the lining. In some cases, UT from the outside may be used. Figure illustrates corrosion tab method of determining metal loss on vessel linings. Small 1 in times 2 in tabs of lining that form a right angle with one leg extending into the vessel may be welded on the lining. The thickness of the protruding leg should be measured at each inspection. Since both sides of the tab are exposed to corrosive action, the loss in thickness would be twice that of the shell lining where only one side is exposed. For example, if found tab's corrosion rate is 0.004 inch per year, so estimated corrosion rate of the liner is 0.002 inch per year. This permits a fairly accurate check of any general corrosion of the lining. Review questions Question number 1 Inspecting tray supports and baffles is usually accomplished using
Answer is C. Question number two. Damaged column trays normally. Answer is A. Question number three. Normally tower, column, trays are inspected using. Answer is A. Question number four. Vessel internal piping should be. Answer is C. Question number five. Process deposits are a significant concern inside. Answer is D. Question number six. A primary concern in heavy wall hydroprocessing reactors is. Answer is B. Question number seven. Which of the following steels is most likely to crack? Answer is C. Question number eight. Which of the following services does not promote cracking in the equipment? Answer is D. Question number 9. A very effective means to find surface cracks is by using. Answer is D. Question number 10. The grooves on an existing ring joint flange should be checked for. Question number 11. Ring joint grooves on existing stainless steel flanges should be checked for. Answer is A. Question number 12. Existing van stone flanges should be checked for. Answer is C. Question number 13. The primary purpose of metallic linings is to prevent. Answer is C. Question number 14. Loose or cracked metallic linings can be found using. Answer is A. 
Question number 15. A vessel is clad with a stainless steel liner. A stainless steel corrosion tab, perpendicular to the shell, is added to help determine if the liner is corroding. Ten years later, it's found that the tab's corrosion rate is 0.002 inch per year. What is estimated corrosion rate of the stainless steel liner? Answer is B. Question number 16. Bulged metallic linings are often the indication of a Answer is D. Question number 17. Whenever there are indications that a metallic liner has leaked, it is important to determine the Answer is C. Question number 18. What type of weld metal overlay is often used for hydrotreater reactors? Answer is D. This lecture is prepared by Samir Saad, and this is his profile.